Hi. 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 Oh, hi. I'm author, writer, author, and all around word porpoise, Guy Bass. Um, and I'm buzzing for books. So um, I wasn't sure what I was going to talk to you about today. Um, and then I uh, started thinking about libraries and how much I missed going to libraries uh, during this strange period. I used to go to libraries all the time. I used to visit libraries to talk to children about books. Um, so what I did was I checked which of my books had been most uh, loaned out last year. And it turns out it was this book, Aid and Abet. Teacher's Pets, published by Barrington Stoke and illustrated by Steve May. And this book is about two things, really. Firstly, it's about animals. Um, I, uh, I've had two pets, basically, when I was growing up. I had um, my parents had a, a black Labrador who was uh, very grumpy and didn't like the fact that uh, we were introduced into his world. Um, and, a, and then a terrier called Poppy, who was lovely. Um, I haven't had a uh, pet since. I live in a flat in London. I live quite high up, um, sort of second floor. So we've got like a roof terrace, but I don't actually have a sort of proper space for a, for a pet. But that's not to say that I haven't um, had uh, visitors. Um, so um, here I am in my study one summer and I, and, I, and I glanced over to the window. Here it is. And there on the windowsill was a surprise in the form of a giant rat. There he was. The window was open. It was a particularly clement day and the rat uh, proceeded to, uh, to start to climb in through the window, rested both his front paws on the, on the radiator and, uh, and just seemed that he wanted to have a chat. Um, it was actually quite nice because, um, you know, I spend a lot of time on my own. It's sometimes a little bit lonely. But then I decided that um, as a giant urban rat about the size of my forearm, um, he probably wouldn't be an ideal pet and would almost certainly carry quite a number of, uh, of communicable diseases. Um, so I did encourage him out of the flat. He did return moments later and uh, for another quick chat. Um, and then he left and, and I never saw him again. I often think about that rat, um, the momentary friendship that we had. Um, I'm not sure if he thinks of me. He never told me his name, but I'm pretty sure it was Simon Parker. Uh, and I, I included him in this book, Skeleton Keys and the Haunting of Luna Moon. We changed his colour because uh, he's quite shy. Um, Anyway, this book is also, it's also about uh, this chap here, Aid and Abet. And Aid and Abet um, has a bit of a problem. He is, he's a, he's a bit of a teacher's pet and he often gets picked on um, by these two boys, Robin, Robin and Robert Robinson, who aren't related. Uh, and so everybody calls them the unrelated Robinsons. And, um, and the unrelated Robinsons uh, tend to pick on Aiden. Um, now, Aiden's done well because he's allied himself with his teacher, Mr. Goodacre. Um, and Mr. Goodacre makes sure that the unrelated Robinsons don't pick on Aiden too much. Unfortunately, Mr. Goodacre has decided to retire. So Aiden has a new teacher. Um, so he knows that the first thing he has to do is ingratiate himself with his teacher so that they will stop him picking on, um, stop the Robinsons picking on him. Um, and his teacher is a bit of a character. She's called Miss Vowell. Um, and Miss Vowell was actually a teacher that I, I actually was taught by um, when, I was, when I was little. Amazing. Um, and Miss Vowell loves animals. This is her application letter for, um, for the job at Teacup Lane Primary School. Uh, <clears throat> Dear Mr. Hedworthy, I am writing to apply for the post of Year 6 teacher at Teacup Lane Primary School. I have more than five years' experience as a teacher. At pheasant, uh, uh, present, I am looking for a big, uh, big challenge, and I believe Teacup Lane would fit the bill. I am a team player 
who is willing to pigeon pitch in <laughs> wherever I am needed. I'm well aware one must be able to wear many cats, hats, in this job and will take this full role seriously. After all, the children's futures are at snake. Steak! <clears throat> I hope to dear hear from you soon. Yours sincerely, Miss Annabel Vowell. So no sooner does Miss Vowell start um, start work as Aidan the Bet's teacher, then he gets a surprise. Animals. Miss Vowell uh, comes into the classroom and behind to the caretaker wheels in crates and cages and boxes and, and, and all sorts of animals, all shapes and sizes. Um, rabbits, uh, parrots, snails, snakes, um, animals of every description. And Aidan thinks this is it. Um, Miss Val loves animals and he thinks this is his chance to make sure that he wins her over um, and keeps himself safe from the unrelated Robinsons. So Aidan decides to volunteer himself to look after all of the animals, even though he doesn't really like them, um, while Miss Val is busy. So this is what happens when Aidan is left alone to look after the animals. For the next few days, Aidan spent every one of his lunchtimes looking after Miss Vowell's animals. He hated every minute of it. It wasn't as if he had better things to do or had loads of friends to hang out with. But all those animals made his skin crawl. All that fur, all those scales, and they went chirp and chirp and, and sss whenever they came near. Aidan felt like a zookeeper. He was always tidying cages, filling water bowls or cleaning up poo. But Miss Vowell was happy to have someone, anyone, who cared about her precious animals as much as she did. She treated Aidan differently from the moment he became her animal's babysitter. You're a good boy, Aidan, Miss Vowell would say to him. The more care that Aidan showed the animals, the more Miss Vowell seemed to like him. She even kept her eye on the unrelated Robinsons. On what more than one occasion, she stopped the boys mid-song or chased them away from the classroom as they closed in on Aidan. So every lunchtime, Aidan stayed in the classroom and looked after the animals. Nothing could make him like them, but after a while, the smell of them made him feel safe. It was a Tuesday lunchtime and Aidan was busy filling the water feeders for the rabbit, hamsters and gerbils. As he kept an eye out for the unrelated Robinsons, he spotted the snake in its cage. It was pressed against one of the glass walls, but not in its usual squirming coils. The shape of the snake formed a perfect V. Huh, Aidan muttered. He edged closer. The snake didn't move, but it seemed to press itself harder against the glass. Aidan didn't know anything about snakes. Was this something they did? Did they make shapes? Could they make letters? Aidan shook his head and shrugged it off. He checked on the other animals to make sure they all had food and water. He paused again at the snail's clear tank. The snails were as idle and disgusting as ever, with their glistening slime trails covering the mossy floor of their tank. For now they were still, except for the twitch of the long stalks above their eyes. But again, Something odd caught Aidan's eye. There was a slime trail along the wall of the tank, and when the light caught it just so, the trail looked like a human being. It was a perfect human shape with arms and legs and a head. And it was drawn by a snail with a slime from its single foot. No way, Aidan muttered. He stepped back. He glanced around to check if someone was playing a trick on him, but there was no one in the classroom. There was no one staring at him from outside. There were just the animals in their cages staring at him. The gerbils stared. The hamsters stared. The rabbit stared. Then the rabbit flicked its head back. Again and again, like it was telling him to come closer. 
Aidan looked around again and then, and then he took a step forward and another and another till he was standing over the hutch. The rabbit edged into a corner and Aidan peered inside. The floor of the hutch was full of droppings. Tiny black pellets peppered the sawdust-covered floor. Oh, I just cleaned you, you stupid thing, Aidan sighed. He glared at the rabbit in frustration. Then he did a double take. The rabbit's droppings had been arranged to spell out a word. That word was help. How are my little darlings? A voice said. Aidan yelped as he spun around. Miss Val was standing beside him. The, the, look, Aidan said as he pointed at the cage. Look at this. Miss Val peered into the rabbit's hutch. Oh my, she sighed. It's filthy. Aidan looked back at the cage. A moment ago, the rabbit's dropping had spelled HELP in neat capital letters. Now there was just a mess. The droppings had been scattered everywhere. But Aidan began. Aidan, you asked for this responsibility, Miss Val went on, with a look around the room. Animals and silliness do not mix. But the animals, they don't, they're not natural. The, the snails, Aidan pointed at the snail cage. Snails now covered the glass walls, their smears covering over any trace of a human shape drawn in slime. Uh, and and, and, and the, sn the snake, Aidan added, and he spun around to the snake cage, but it no longer looked in the least bit like a V. It had coiled itself around a branch and it looked simply like a snake. But, Aidan blurted again, Aidan, if you don't think you're up to this, you mustn't pretend you are. Miss Val said, that's not fair on me or you, or most importantly, the animals. I am, Aidan said, in a sudden panic that he was about to fall out of favour with Miss Val. I am up to it. Well, that's good to hear, Miss Val said, and a smile appeared on her face. I need to know that... A boy stumbled into the classroom, interrupting Miss Val mid-sentence. He was running so fast that he ran straight into Miss Val's desk and knocked a stack of, stack of textbooks onto the floor. Oops, he said, trying to pretend he wasn't running in the first place. It was Maxwell Small, the tallest boy in the class. Everyone called him Big Max. He was always crashing into things and causing a mess and he always seemed to rather enjoy it. Aidan was never one to miss a chance to keep his teacher sweet and so right away he began to pick up the textbooks. Miss Vowell stared at Big Max. It's still break time, Maxwell, she said. Off you go, outside. OK, Big Mac said as he turned to go. And Maxwell, Miss Val added, come and see me after school. Big Mac shrugged and bumbled out of the classroom. Aidan never saw Big Max again.